Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at different structures of the abdomen, both inside and out. And if you look closely, we have a particular model which is a little bit different from usual because this is cut at a transverse plane. What that means is that we have cut the body along the horizontal plane or the transverse plane so that now we can look down into the abdomen and see various organs, blood vessels, ducts, and then also muscles. So to get started, let's go ahead and orient ourselves to this model. And some things that might be familiar to you at this point is this bone back here. So this, you can see this really big chunky bone. This is actually the vertebral body of the lumbar vertebra. So this means that this is the posterior side. And furthermore, you can see like the spine of the lumbar vertebra and so on as well. And then if you look on the front, you actually also could see a muscle that would look familiar. Divided in half, you have a left and right side of the rectus abdominis with the linea alba in the middle. So now that we can kind of see that we have the anterior side and the posterior side, let's also look at some organs in here as well. So inside of the abdomen, you can see a few things. You can see the liver, you can see the stomach, you can see the spleen, and all of those are intraperitoneal within the peritoneum. But then behind the peritoneum, you can also see a couple of things as well, such as these two back here, which are called the kidneys. And then these two, which include the inferior vena cava, as well as the abdominal aorta. So let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at this blue covering really quickly. And then we'll look at some more specific stuff as well. So I just brought it up, but if you recall, these are intra or retro peritoneal, which means that it's going to be relative to this covering called the peritoneum. So there's actually two kind of parts to the peritoneum, the peritoneum on the organs themselves. This is called visceral peritoneum. And then this peritoneum along the posterior wall, as well as the rest of the abdominal wall, this blue layer along the outside is called the parietal peritoneum. So visceral is on the organs, parietal is along the wall, and that's what those two words mean. Visceral organ, parietal, wall. Now if you also look closely, let's go ahead and start taking a look at some blood vessels and tubes. Starting off with right here, we have the abdominal aorta. Now although it doesn't show it super completely, you can see that there's this one blood vessel that comes off right here, this is called the celiac trunk. And the celiac trunk typically has three branches that you can see, but in this case, you can only see two. So one and two. But if we look at this one, we have a pretty clear path over here to the spleen. So luckily, this is called the splenic or splenic artery. So splenic artery, this is going to be going to the spleen. And then on this side, although we can't follow it completely, it's going to go under this peritoneum, back up over here, and then to the liver. Now we have a word that we will use to describe most of the structures of the liver, and that is hepatic. So this right here is called the common hepatic artery, which continues over here as well. But if you look closely, there's also two more structures here, a kind of light blue or purplish one, and then also a green one, which is a little bit new. So this one right here, first of all, the bluish one, this is going to be the counterpart to the artery, so common hepatic artery. But this one is a little bit special. This is called hepatic portal vein. And this is going to be bringing blood into the liver. I know, a little bit odd for veins, but it's going to be bringing blood from the digestive system to then be filtered and processed and detoxified in the liver. So two things bring blood to the liver, hepatic, or sorry, common hepatic artery, and hepatic portal vein. And then this green one is a little bit special to the liver because this is going to be carrying bile. So this is actually called the common hepatic duct, which brings bile out of the liver and then down to the duodenum of the small intestine. So you have three things kind of like together making this triad, common hepatic artery, hepatic portal vein, and common hepatic duct. Now, if you look closely, you also have a triad inside of the liver itself. 
And in fact, this triad is going to be repeated throughout the liver because these are going to be like a repeated arrangement throughout the lobules of the liver. And those we cannot really see here, but at the very least, we can see the branches of these three, which will then be kind of distributed throughout various parts of the liver. So you can actually name these, and instead of being like the big ones, these are called branches. So you actually have branch of hepatic artery for the red. So maybe you can't see it. Branch of hepatic artery for the red. Branch of hepatic portal vein for the purple. And then sometimes just bile duct, but also branch of bile duct for the green. So that would be the same thing for each of these because it's a repeated unit that you'll see throughout the liver. Now, what else can we see here? So if you look closely, there's also going to be muscles. And these muscles are a little bit odd looking because you can't see the whole shape of everything. But we can relate this to different parts of the body that we already know. So if you look closely right here, this is the lumbar vertebra. This is in the back of the abdomen. And if we shift over to another model very shortly, you can see the lumbar vertebra back here. Now, what would be this muscle right next to the lumbar vertebra? And then furthermore, where are we in here? We're like near the kidney. So what is this muscle right here near the kidney or next to the kidney and the lumbar vertebra? So this muscle is called the psoas major. So the psoas major is going to be right next to the lumbar vertebra. And although a little bit thin, you can see that here as well. But then there's also one more muscle right next to the psoas major over here. So going from the, ili the iliac crest up to the lumbar vertebra behind the kidney, as well as next to the psoas major or rather lateral to the psoas major, you have quadratus lumborum. So quadratus lumborum, that is going to be right next to psoas major over here. So there's a faint line that you might be able to see. It's right around here or so along the posterior edge of the kidney next to psoas major. Now there's also some muscles along the posterior side of the lumbar vertebra as well. So these muscles we were able to see inside of the abdomen, but then there's also a couple of muscles back here as well. So along the vertebra, you actually have a group of muscles. This group of muscles helps to straighten out the vertebral column. This is called the erector spinae group. So the erector spinae group is gonna be somewhat deep, but also very medial next to the spine of the lumbar vertebra. And then also, there's this muscle that's relatively broad, very superficial, very posterior, and then relatively broad. If you look closely, take a look at the back here. What muscle would be, cut, would be cutting across and seeing along the back of the abdomen? So if you were looking at these two muscles, you'd be correct. And if you know what that's called, this is the latissimus dorsi. So the latissimus dorsi, you can see right here, it's very thin, very broad, and it's superficial along the back. So with that said, that's about all you can see on this model. I mean, there might be a few minor things, but that's definitely the most of it. So with that said, good luck to studying. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time.